In the second part of this lecture, we are going to set up the simulation and we will uh, make a custom grid, which is going to be interesting. And you'll see why that is as we look through the results. Um, the other thing we're going to do right at the beginning, which uh, I did not do foolishly in the last section, is to save. So let's go ahead and save this file. Uh, make sure that you save regularly because you do not want to be caught remaking these. So I've called this flat plate. You can call it whatever you like. Um, all right. So the first thing we're going to do is launch the SolidWorks flow simulation module or add-in or whatever. And give that a moment. All right. Um, the uh, what we'll begin by doing, as usual, is we'll go through the wizard. And so hit the wizard and great, away we can go. So let's call this flat plate or again, whatever you like. And begin to go through our routine of making sure we set the uh, digits to be sufficiently high here. And once we've set ourselves up with precise uh, digits can advance to the analysis type. And again, this could be set up in a exterior flow type scenario, but it's easier to use boundary conditions that allow us to mimic flow over a flat plate in an internal surface. So the analysis type is the same as it has been previously. We're internal flow, we're excluding cavities, and uh, we don't have any of these other physical features. So then we can advance to fluid. And this time we're not gonna deal with water, we're going to use air. So go through gases and there are some predefined gases in here and you wanna double click air. And for the first flow, we're going to look at laminar only. And we'll modify that later on, but for now we just want to see what the laminar flow uh, behavior is like. So you can advance. No need to change anything with walls. And then for the velocity parameters, we're going to start this off with 15 meters per second in the X direction. Again, provided that you've used the same face uh, to set up your uh, model. Otherwise, if you used a different face, just make sure that the velocity matches. And with that, we can finish and begin to set our boundary conditions. So I want to set the inlet first, that's terrible. And, and let's go ahead, right-click boundary conditions and insert. And you want to select the mirror one face and we want to go inlet velocity. And we're going to use a little more precision right here. We're going to go 15.24 meters per second. And then you can go ahead and check okay. Next, we're going to set the outlet. Oh, weird. Just gonna do that every time. Okay, strange. All right, so you can select the outlet face, uh, right click, insert boundary condition. And for the outlet, we'll go to the pressure condition tab and let's select static pressure and the default environmental pressures are fine. So we're gonna stick with those, accept that. So here we've got our velocity, we've got our pressure. Now we need to set our wall conditions. And this is where it's gonna come in why we went through this process of mirroring the solid. So now you'll see I can select this face and this face separately, right? And so for the first part of the flow, we're gonna allow that flow to develop within the uh, simulative domain. And in the second part of the flow, that flow which has already been simulated and has that history throughout the first half of the channel is going to encounter the wall. 
So let's set the uh, secondary surface along the flow direction at the bottom of the Y. So we want this at the Y equals zero surface. Select that, right click boundary condition, insert boundary condition. And then we're going to set that to be a wall and we want it to be a real wall. So again, with uh, where, where it's actually going to exert a shear on the fluid. And it's going to enforce no slip. So there you can see you've got these grayed out squares. And now what we want to do for the remaining walls is we would like to set uh, ideal wall conditions. And if the wall condition is ideal, that means it's not imposing any slip. And so, uh, so sorry, it is allowing slip, I should say. So you will essentially have, uh, you know, it's as if you have that free stream continuing indefinitely because there's no shear imposed on the top layer of fluid. There's no shear imposed on the sides or on the surface. We're just going to get whatever flow we've got coming in and that's going to continue until it encounters the wall. So the next thing you want to do, you can come up with a cut that allows you to select all of the features at one time if you really want but I'm just going to do this in stages. So first I'll select the top walls and then I'll select the side walls and then I'll select the bottom walls. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, let me just redo that. So I'm selecting everything I can see with this initial cut. And now we wanna go right click boundary conditions, insert boundary condition. Then you wanna hit wall and you want to select ideal wall. And there should be six here. There are indeed. Face one already belongs to a real wall. Oh, whoops. Ah, so I have done that incorrectly. Don't select the face that you are trying to set to be the plate. That's a good lesson. So make sure that you don't override that face. Oops. I don't want to select that line. Ah. So if this takes you a moment, don't worry about it because it's taking me a moment also. Okay. So now we're just going to avoid that face, which we would like to be a wall. And now right click boundary conditions, insert boundary condition, ideal wall, except good. All right, and the last face we would like to edit is, well, it'll be easy if we just go in this direction and drag this, oops, well, that'll work too. Okay, let's accept that. And now we have to make these final two uh, walls, ideal walls as well. And so again, go to wall, ideal wall, accept. And now we should have um, ideal wall four is going to have uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven. So perfect. Seven surfaces is how many we want for ideal walls. Good. So that's our boundary conditions. What we're going to do next is we're going to create a, uh, a mesh for this. So we're going to want to view this from the front plane, and we are going to want to get rid of this section view and look at the regular section view, if we can do that. Perfect. All right, so orient yourself, look at it from the front. Um, you can hide these guys doesn't help to look at them. And now we want to edit the definition of the global mesh, change the type to manual, and we're going to define our own mesh. So here we have NX 30, you can keep it at 30, NY 6, you can keep it at 6, NZ 6, and we can set that to 1. And that's because this is effectively going to be a 2D flow. And uh, you want to unselect channels and refinement. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define the planes and ourselves. And we want to basically 
describe how that mesh is going to be refined with kind of precision control over it. So hit control planes, and you'll get a dialog that looks like this. First, you'll have uh, you'll have uh, you know these red, blue, and green planes, and a, a panel below where we can enter a bunch of numbers. And what you want to do is grab the green arrow and drag up and inside. And you'll see that that will, well, and then it will ask you for a number and you can just ignore the number for now. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to accept that. So let's add, go back to control planes. And, and now you can see that it's added a Y plane. And you just wanna do that five more times. So you wanna add a total of six. And again, don't worry about the locations yet. So just drag them in and then hit enter. One more. All right, so now we have seven total categories here where there are groups of layers. And the next thing we're gonna do is set all of the heights. And so I give all of these numbers in the notes. Um, let's just set the maximums here. So first we want this to be 0 0.05, and it's gonna kick up an error every time you do this and you can just ignore the error. It's, uh, oh, sorry, you know what? We want this to be 0 0.025 first. So this should be 0 0.025. Okay, ignore. The next one is 0 0.05. Good. The next one is 0.2, sorry. 0.1, and then we're going to go up systematically. 0 0.1 meters, and you'll notice that it's updating all of the minimums accordingly. Then we're going to 0.2 meters. Then we go up to 0.4 meters. And lastly, we go up to 0.8 meters. What's going on there? Uh, so now we've distributed the planes and you want to select the type that we're dealing with. So click the down arrow under type and uh, select number in each instance. And it will have auto populated the number of nodes in each case, but we are going to select all of these to 20 or sorry, we're, we're gonna set all of them to 20, okay? So 20, 20, 20. Again, all of these errors can be ignored. All right, so there we have it. We have these plates distributed with increments from 0 0.025, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8 meters, and then all the way up to the top. And in each set, we for each region, we've selected the number of nodes manually and set it to 20. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and accept that mesh. And if you right click and show mesh, uh, you can see that that what we've done is we've created uh, a mesh that starts off course as we go higher and higher. And then as we go lower and lower and approach the plate, we have an increasingly well-resolved mesh. Um, and once we've done that, uh, we want to set some criteria for the solver. So let's right-click goals and click insert global goals. And then we want to set the mass flow rate. So mass flow rate, there we go. And then we want to set average shear stress in the X direction. 
And again, we're selecting these goals based on the uh, properties that sort of govern the dynamics of the fluid in this situation uh, and uh, or, or like are playing an outsized role in the, in the physics uh, in terms of uh, the phenomenology we're looking at. And so we're also uh, selecting features that are going to be uh, items that we will be interested in investigating so that the, we make sure that the solver is uh, resolving those properties well. So select the average shear stress again in the X direction, and you can go ahead and click OK. So we've got global goal, mass flow rate one, average shear stress two. And now uh, the last thing we're going to do is we are going to modify the uh, solver's goals in detail. So we're going to open the calculation control options. It's beside run, batch run, solve, calculation control options. And you want to uh, ensure that um, goals convergence is set to all goals. Uh, let me just double check. We want to just uncheck travels. And uh, then under goals criteria, we are going to set a manual goal for shear stress. And we want this to be resolved to a much more fine level. So select one PA and modify it so that's one times 10 to the negative five Pascals, oops, 10 to the minus five. Click OK. And with that, we're ready to run. So then if you run the simulation, everything here should be fine. You can run. Within the solver, we can go insert goal table, and this will just allow us to monitor the progress of the simulation. So it will spit out an average value of the uh, wall shear stress, and it will indicate progress towards the goal that we set. So right now, the shear stress is changing pretty dramatically between iterations, so it's made very little progress. And then as we get uh, convergence, that progress will uh, go to 100, and there we have the completed simulation. So in the next segment, we're going to uh, go through some of these results and do some post-processing.